been here 20 years. I had a wife, children, a job, a place. I had a life. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. My brother said he finds my situation embarrassing. I had a stillborn son and my partner at the time lost his job. You never get a good night's sleep. You are always conscious of every noise, especially being a woman and a black man. I've been kicked and robbed and spat on. We're just a number to them. We're not human. I'm Daniel, I'm an ex-homeless person. I'm 26 years old. I became street homeless due to family breakup, um, losing my job. I kind of lost everything all in one and then I just ended up pretty much on the streets. When I was sleeping rough, I was trying to hide myself from everyone else. I didn't want to make myself public or anything like that. So I felt kind of secluded from, from everything that was, that was around me, you know. My name's Stanley and I'm 51 this year. Through the fact of being homeless, I felt lost. Daily life was hard. At some stages it felt like it wasn't even worth being alive. Got to a stage where it was better to be on my own than to be with family and friends. So in, in a way, it was like I was the alien on the planet. I'm Lloyd Codrington, I'm 52. I've been homeless about five months. My situation is difficult. Every day I'm still trying to resolve my personal situation, but at the same time, I'm trying to help others. I work for this organisation, Buses for Homeless. We're converting, at the moment, four double-decker buses to look after homeless people. I have got family, brothers, sister, mum, dad, and I didn't want to tell no one, I didn't want to worry no one. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. I didn't want no one to feel sorry for me. I felt like I didn't want to put my, my troubles onto them. I didn't tell my son that I was homeless because at that point I was ashamed of giving him that information. And I felt that by him having at that time, having his exams were more, more, more pressure on him emotionally and still at this moment in time even though I have accommodation he still doesn't know but his father was homeless. Recently I've kind of had a personal tragedy um, in, in, in three weeks time I'm going to be burying my son and I've had to kind of live with that on the street. I've got this work that I'm doing which is kind of it, it can never take my mind off what's going on and the loss of my son but we're going to name one of the buses after my son, and that's what I'm working to at the moment. The homeless crisis is so big. There is so many people that are hidden homeless people. I had to still go to work, um, which was important because that was my only sanity at the time. Um, but then obviously being homeless after work had nowhere to go, nothing to do. funny thing is, generally a lot of the people that are homeless, that are working, that aren't begging, um, you, you don't actually see them. So there's a lot of people you probably walk in past as you go about your daily lives that are actually homeless. They just don't look homeless. Never judge a homeless person because you don't know their story, you don't know them, you don't know their situation that they're in now. So always take the time out to to be empathetic to these people and to show to show them you're a normal person and that they're also a normal person and everybody should be treated the same. Homeless people don't come with a tattoo, you know. Um, it's not there on our foreheads. We all look different, we all do different things and, you know, we're like the rainbow, you know. We're not just black and white. It's not a plain, simple picture, one shape fits all. We're homeless for all different reasons, whether you come from a rich background, middle class, poor background, 
So even if you aren't homeless, you should still think to yourself, but people who are homeless, I can still help them in some way. As a society, we should all try and help our community.